guys, welcome back to another episode. Before we get stuck in, I just want to make you aware of two things. So the first thing is I almost lost my drone trying to capture these morning shots. That's why there's more morning shots than you typically expect in a spearfishing video. But yeah, it was just absolutely hectic. It was a very, very stressful start to the day, but the drone shots were worth it. And sometimes you've got to risk it for the biscuit, but almost losing my drone to the ocean, $7,500 in the drain would have absolutely sucked and it would just not have been an ideal start to the morning but thankfully i managed to reconnect to the drone and land it safely basically it lost connection whilst it was over water and tried returning to home which was a long way from where we were and yeah just the paths didn't quite line up so thank you for that the second thing is we don't typically take that much fish on this channel but on today's episode you will see a bit more fish taken than usual this was because we were supplying fish for a, a funeral, and on a happier note, we were supplying fish for a wedding as well. This was two friends of Leone's, and yeah, it's just the done thing in Fiji. You kind of supply to um, events and family gatherings and bring people together over food, over happy moments and sad moments. So that's what we did. We decided to turn it into a little bit of a competition. Myself being from the UK originally, Michael being from Australia, John being from Canada, and then Leone being from Fiji. It was just a bit of fun. Um, not typically a competitive person, especially when it comes to spearfishing, but yeah, went in Rome and just cracking day out with a couple of blokes. So yeah, check it out. And just like that, we're back in the water, gearing up. So this is gonna be a fun day, I just know it. It just feels right. After the last trip with the boys, it, yeah, can only be good things. We got onto some good ground and Leone's got some keen ideas to explore some new cool spots. I will just say a massive, massive thank you to Michael from Immersion Fiji for lending me his GoPro. Believe it or not, between the three of us, me, Michael, and John, in two months, we had rinsed four GoPros. So that's four GoPros between three of us in two months we'd killed through flooding and overheating. Just, you know, standard GoPro problems. Anyway, you can see that there's plenty of fish around. We decided to get the flasher out and try our luck for some nice Mackies. And they didn't come in to begin with, but they might appear later on. Come across my first actual legal cray in Fiji, which is absolutely awesome. I'm missing a bit of footage from this episode. Um, it's just spread across a few of our GoPros and wasn't able to get the clips, but I managed to get this cray out after plugging a shot into him and yeah, absolutely tasty treat. There's a Maori sea perch in open country, top down shot, we'll take it. These guys are really really fun to hunt, I've got to admit it. Like especially when they're on the outside of the reef, they are just so hard to tempt in. A really really intelligent wary fish. I got this guy on a tail shot but it was leaning forward so it's a good holding shot. I just ensure that the spear's gone the whole way through and this is because of when I shot the fish on the top down it the spear would have hit the reef and bounced up back into the fish. Ickied the fish and I'm absolutely stoked. This is one of the few places in Fiji that you can actually collect Maori sea perch and not have to worry about cigatera. Alrighty, Maori sea perch, beautiful fish. Not my best shot though. 
fish on the boat. <laughs> what a wicked fish to have as the first one in the boat. Just exploring some new territory. I've actually moved away from the guys a little bit and yeah, absolutely loving it. We drop off at another spot and I pretty much just go down and check out this awesome bit of structure. On the right day, this would definitely fire up. We moved spots as there wasn't many fish at the last spot. But we hop in here and we just decide to okay, start checking out all these bombies the, and the diving down off the edges. <laughs> as you can see, there's a lot of bait and a lot of activity. They're moving around, which means that they've been hunted recently. Here's a Spanish mackerel, followed by two GTs. I hadn't ticked the GT off yet, so. Boom. I'm absolutely frothing. This is like the perfect size eat in GT. Wouldn't bother smacking anything too large for the table, just because of they get a bit tough. Apparently it's comparable to mutton, so. Michael dives down with a bit of an assist just to help me as I get up to the surface and keep the GT off the reef. An interesting behavioural difference between the giant trevally and the bluefin trevally is that a giant trevally will, once shot, will almost always head for open water, whereas a bluefin will sometimes try and get you in the reef. This guy just got dragged into the reef by me as I was swimming up. I'm stoked! Fuck yeah! Yeah, buddy. First GT. GT, baby! What a memorable experience. Yeah. So we basically just decide to keep diving these bombies, and as you can see, the life just keeps coming, keeps coming. The only thing that was pushing us onto another bomby was literally just the shark and shoot a couple of fish and then all of a sudden sharks would come in. Alrighty. Michael oh. landing a nice narrow barred mackerel. <laughs> Absolutely stoked. You can see the esky is starting to fill. I don't have the footage of the other lads clipped, but what we do have is their channels where you can go check out their videos. John got a nice midnight snapper. Here we had a grey reef. Honestly, I got one of the, I thought I had one of the best grey reef charges on film. It came straight at me out of the blue and yeah, we played chicken and he pulled away. I think maybe I was a bit shocked, who knows. Shocked or stupid, one of the two for sure. This kind of bait activity is just incredible it's perfect signs for that there's big fish around if you ever see fish this active just hold your ground explore and you'll definitely find something here there's two blue fins they start moving away from me so i pull the old look away from them they come straight back in i absolutely caught their curiosity there it's one of the top tips that i can recommend with trevallis that you just look away from the fish all of a sudden like you're distracted by a bit of bait and they'll come in to check out what you're distracted by and then you just line in a shot and boom, plug them in the head. I will never get tired of the colors of these fish. They are absolutely incredible. I love a bluefin trevally and they're delicious eating too. Michael coming up from the depths. John put the end to a poor surgeon fish that had been shot by one of the other lads and managed to break free. So, good on him. Michael scouting for coral trout and trevally, and maybe even a Spanish mackerel with those turnarounds. So Michael had actually told me of some fish down on the bottom, and 
I dive down to have a little investigation. I make my way down. This bommie had been so productive. There had been so many fish, predatory fish, hanging on the outside of it, just working lines, attacking the bait. As you can see, there's two passion fruit coral trout here, and there was actually a third just off to my right. So the options were there. This guy holds on. I line in, shoot, and he runs into the reef. How's the reaction time to the sharks? You will never ever get over, it's similar to Brisbane. When you pull a trigger on a fish, you're gonna have sharks come in straight away. And if you start acting all erratic, panicking, you're gonna have a hairy day. Stand your ground when it's sensible to do so and ensure that you're not letting the sharks take advantage of you because if they will learn very, very quickly if you are prey or if you're a threat and they'll leave you alone or they'll come in harder at you. Awesome. Absolutely stoked with this passion fruit trout. Yeah. I'm in love with the colors of these guys. They are absolutely <laughs> wicked and slowly but surely the red comes back to him just before I get him on the boat. Amazing. That is a solid, perfect trout in my eyes. <laughs> I'm pretty much done for the day. Um, the lads have got a few other species that they want to tick off, so we move to a few more spots and basically just carry on spearing. I'm just filming. John takes a shot on a sweet lip, which gets stuck in the reef because of the spear. I hand him my gun and I dive down on him. We're using the flasher on the edge of the reef system and that's basically just for trevally. It's a really, really good thing to bring in trevally, barracuda and Spanish mackerel. Here you can see a oriented sweet lip and these are a definite favorite in Fiji. The Fijians absolutely love the sweet lip species and I've eaten a few myself and they are pretty good. They make for a good undesirables episode, I think. After a bit of wiggling and pulling and shaking and shoving without any real destruction to the reef, I managed to break this guy free. The viz wasn't great at this spot, but we still worked it like hungry otters. Leone is literally fluid like the water. This man is the ocean, I'm convinced. He gets himself a nice great spotted sweet lip. This patch of reef just wasn't the day that it fired, but check this structure. Not one, not two, but three swim throughs. Absolutely wicked to see. Not a whole heap of a live coral on this patch. It might have been hit by a cyclone in the past. Um, but it's got enough structure there that it would generate current and everything that you need to produce good fish life on the right day. There she is, looking absolutely beautiful. I just had to get her out the esky to show her off. So that's it, we decided to call quits. We've got more than enough fish to feed both the funeral, the wedding, and ourselves, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, an incredible day out. I just wanna say a massive thank you to Leone from Great Sea Reef Divers, and Michael from Immersion, and John from the Waka family because of what an absolute day out. This is definitely one of my favorite memories from the last trip to Fiji. Just an incredible day out diving with awesome people, experiencing incredible ocean scenes and hunting wicked fish. What more could you want? I smacked my first GT. I think there were a few other firsts with John smacking his first ever midnight snapper, which was absolutely wicked. And yeah, just being amongst the ocean, enjoying it all was just incredible. Unfortunately, we didn't get much shore footage. Um, we were down on batteries and yeah, it was just one of those days where it was better to just enjoy the rest of the afternoon than 
get stuck into everything else. John skillfully drinking his tea without spilling any whilst on the boat send nice, back to nice. the island. straight towards us oh, and then just went. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers! Oh, yeah. Cheers, Cheers boys. boys. Thank, you. Thank you, Leone. Thank you, Leone. Well, it's a pretty perfect ending to a pretty perfect day. Mm. We forgot to explain. We actually got the competition slightly wrong. We said oh. it was... Uh, the UK, Canada, and Australia, and Fiji versus each other. But that wasn't quite right. What it was supposed to be right. was UK, Canada, Australia versus Fiji. <laughs> yeah, so in that case... In that case, oh, Fiji won. <laughs> <laughs> On fire today, Leone. On fire today. Oh, <laughs> I did I did learn a lot from this guy though. He can die. Holy smokes. He can die. Jeez. We did we did good. We all did good. We all got fish. Yep. Fish in yep. the esky, got mackerel, trevally, whole heap of reefies, and yeah, I got my first GC. Get in. Yes. Nice. <laughs> so sick. Nice. Um yeah, perfect day. Rowdy start to the day though. Yeah, stressful Crazy. start to the day, but after that, as soon as you hit the water, calm down, everything just... I forgot about flowed. it, until we mentioned it at the end of the day. Yeah, the whole drone scenario Whew. fiasco. Stressful. All good though. Yeah. And he only dropped us on a single bommie that was just loaded with fish. So many fish. Like, bait fish everywhere, different sorts of uh, fusies and stuff there, and then trevally, red bass, coral trout, uh, cod, mackerel, uh, bluefin, everything was on there. Everything was on there just hitting hitting the bait. Um, and I'm thinking, well, we're not going to move the rest of the day. But then the sharks did get a little bit agitated. So, um, yeah. So we moved on and still got fish. So, bloody great day. Amazing. Cool. Set. What do you think? <laughs> Have a sniff? Uh... 